if you would just open your mouth and worship him. If you would just worship him. Lay aside everything and just worship him. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You said you are the God that healeth thee. Oh, God, so I thank you for healing, delivering, setting free. I thank you for healing minds in here right now in Jesus' name. For touching minds right now. The contrary mind. The mind that's scattered here and there and every place. I thank you, my God, for touching the mind right now in Jesus' name. Settling them, settle them, settle them in the name of Jesus. Settle them. In the name of Jesus. Ah, let your peace, let your peace, let your peace. Glory be to God. Be here. Touch my God in the name of Jesus. Touch the troubled soul right now in Jesus' name. Bring calm to the spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Turmoil has to leave. Anxiety has to leave. Strife has to leave. Fear has to leave. We loose in this house. Peace. Peace to the spirit. Peace to that troubled spirit. Uh, send the fresh wind, Lord. The fresh wind. Blow in your house. Blow in your house. Ha ka taraba sakanda do bo shanti. Ha ke handere beshe. Oh Jesus, I da do bo sha. Ah, here's the calmness. Kanda do bo sha. Ah, kind of about shout. Oh, if you just lift your hands up in here. Just lift your hands up. Ah, kind of about shout. Ah, take it in. Take it in. Shout, kind of about shout. Take it in. Oh, Jesus. Ah, send that about shout, kind of about shout. Ah, there's a sweet spirit in the house right now. Ah, God, Darabosha. You are the God that healeth thee. You are the God that healeth thee. Uh -huh. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Shatanabosha. Ah, Karabasa. Oh, yes, 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 Father. Thank you for the fresh wind. Thank you. Thank you for the refreshing. Thank you for the refreshing. Oh, thank you for settling the troubled mind. Thank you for settling. Thank you for giving calmness where there was turmoil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Just love on him for a minute. Just love on him. Love on Jesus. 
glory to God. For he is the one. My God, he is the one that calms the troubled spirit. Glory to God. That causes the waters. Glory be to God. Not to be troubled. Smooth. Calm minds. Calm minds. There were some that came in here troubled. 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 Ah, but God is sending his peace. He's sending his peace. Mm. He's sending that fresh wind in here to revive and to replenish and to get you scented. To get you scented. You take your mind off the things on the outside and put your mind on the one that can change everything else. Oh, bless God. The word of God declares he will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Not stayed on what's going on the outside. But when your mind is stayed on him. Ah. Oh God, I thank you, Jesus. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you. Your alpha and your Omega, you are the beginning and you are the ending. The author and the finisher of our faith. The true and living God. The immortal God. The only wise God. All glory, all dominion, and all power goes to Jesus. Oh, give God a hand clap in the house. Oh, I didn't say clap for me. I said clap for Jesus. The word of God says, clap your hands, oh, ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. Are there any shouters in here? Are there any victorious saints in this house right now? Are there any victorious saints in here? Oh, clap your hands, oh ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. Ha, shakat tarabashanda. Whoa, yes, sir, yes, sir. You are God and God all by yourself. There is none like you. Rise up, O Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Let all them that hate thee flee before thee. Rise up, O Lord. Oh, I hear my spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
He is strong and he is mighty. Ah, oh, he is the everlasting God. The true and the living God. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Clapping your hands, my God, sends out a signal to the atmosphere. I don't care what you tried to do to me this week. <laughs> it didn't mean nothing. Glory be to God. I don't care what the newsman says. I don't care what nobody say. I care what Jesus says. And he tells me to tell you, clap your hands and shout. Glory be to God. Give him the glory. Let him know, glory be to God, that you are a victorious people. Let him know, glory be to God, that you are on the winning side. That you recognize and realize, glory be to God, that you are stronger than strong. You are mightier than mighty. Let him know that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. He is the God that healeth thee. Oh, yes. Mm. Now we can bring the word, I think. Oh, shatarabasiti and alabasai. <laughs> oh God. Uh, it's troubled. The water is troubled. Mm. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus. Do you not understand that you felt fine on the outside, but as soon as you came into the house, you started feeling all messed up? Why do you think that is? It's called distraction and deception. Because if you feel that way, you cannot receive what God has for you. So God had to come in here and bring peace to a troubled mind. Bring peace to troubled spirits. To do away with the anxiety and the strife. That you can, my God, worship him in spirit and in truth. Because then and only then does he inhabit the praises of his people. He does not inhabit the praises of his people when people are all here and there and every place else. Their mind has to be centered on him. On him. Oh, don't you love Jesus? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Well, we bless God. We thank God for each and every one of you. Jesus. 
We thank God for his word. Letting us know that he's satisfied. Every now and then, we just have to remember who you belong to and whose house that you're in. We're not here to satisfy one another. We're here to satisfy God. We're here to satisfy God. For all that he has done, all that he is going to do, all that he's doing right now, right now. Just love Jesus. Just love him. My God, he is a keeper. He's given us a word, a word that I really I had to um, not struggle with, but I said, God, are you telling me that I have to tell somebody they can have a baby? Mm. See, you laugh and see, but God has anointed me with that, that I, I tell women they can have babies and they just have babies. <laughs> you see, <laughs> oh God. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's birthing in the spirit. So you ladies can be a little careful out there. You know, you just take a deep breath. But the Lord has anointed me to touch women and talk to women, and God has brought forth natural babies on more than one occasion. On some occasions, they were thankful. Other occasions, they was hateful towards me for even telling them. As we don't get into the word today, but um, you got to tell people what God says. And as Pastor Diane just said, yes, it's birthing in the spirit. It's time to birth. It's time to birth. And do you also realize after the blessing, there's going to be a test? I know you realize that before a blessing you get tested, but after a blessing you get tested also. And I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the, the word to show you what I'm just telling you. That many of you are going through what you're going through because God has blessed you. Now the test has come. Now the test has come. Just the fact that you woke up this morning, God means a blessing from God. And like I just previously said, some of you came out, came to church today, you felt good on the outside. But as soon as you came through the doors, you started feeling, yeah. That's because the devil does not want you. The adversary does not want to. He doesn't want you to praise God. He wants you just to uh, look at your situations and dwell on that. But I refuse. I refuse. He has done too much for me and for you. For us to hold back his praise. Amen. Everybody in here. God has done something for. Oh yes he has. I want you to turn to 2 Kings. <laughs> oh my Lord. Chapter 4. Verses 18 to 23. 2 Kings chapter 18. Chapter 4 excuse me. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. Now, you know something? Go to 23, then go down to 26 and 27 also. Go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 18 to 23. Then we're going to drop down to verses 26 and 27. Amen? Father, we thank you and we praise you. We honor you. Glory be to God. Be safe, Seer. Have a good one. We bless you, dear God. We thank you for your word today, my God, and we thank that your word shall go forth and will accomplish that which you please. We thank you for your presence even now, my God. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that it will go, your word will go forth with clarity, with understanding, 
it will land on good soil in the name of Jesus. We bless you in advance, Lord Jesus, for all that's going to be accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Kings chapter 4, starting at verse 18. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. And he sat her, and he sat him on her knees till noon. And then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. And shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. I want you to hear what she's saying. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Down 26 and 27. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, it is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by, his, by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord has hid it from me. And has not told me. Mm. Glory be to God. I want to talk to you about this as testing after the blessing. You may sit down. There is a testing after the blessing. Mm. Glory to God. Feel this thing, Jesus. Blessings of the Lord are not always materialistic, physical, per se. There are times that God will bless you with the desires of your heart. Those desires that you don't speak about, they're hidden, nor do you think you could ever obtain for whatever reasons. So there are times when you have a desire that you want something from God, it, you have been denied for so long, you just don't feel you're ever going to have it. But the desire is still there. It's hidden. It's hidden. And you don't, you just don't feel like you go about, everybody has gotten elevated. Everybody has moved on. Everybody has gotten certain things. But here I am with the desire, but it's hidden in my heart because I just don't think I'm ever going to have it. I can dream about it, but I just don't think I'm ever going to have it. But Psalms 37, verses 4 and 5 says this, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Then it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. That word desire means request or petition. But what happens here is the fact, again, I have given it to God. I've asked him, but I have gotten no answer. I mean, this is not something that I've just, just asked. I've been asking for a long time. And it's gotten to the point now that I just feel I'm not going to get it at all. But I still have the desire in my heart. It's hidden. It's still there. And there are burdens that you've been carrying longer than nine months. There are some hidden desires, my God, that God could not bring forth right away. It had to come to full term. There are some things that you and I have had in our hearts for a long time, hidden, hidden. And we have totally given up on it, actually, and I'll show you in Scripture. Because the text, this text, in 2 Kings chapter 4 with Elisha, 
kind of re- it's going to remind you similar of First Kings chapter seventeen with Elijah. Well, in that particular text, Elijah is the one that r- did the first resurrection of a boy. In First Kings chapter seventeen, there was a boy that had died from a widow's mother, and his mother was a widow, and the boy died. But unlike Elisha, this woman here in First Kings says this to e- Elijah. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? So she's accusing of Elijah of killing her son because of her sin, whatever her sin was. Unlike in the book of Elisha, it is not like that. It's not like that at all. But this woman, because she was in sin, she felt that God was so uh, mad with her, he's going to kill her son. So Elijah had to go before God and plead to God not to kill the son, because the son died. Again, this is the first resurrection that we will find in Scripture of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17. This was his fourth miracle. And so Elijah does similar to what we're going to find out with Elisha. He takes the boy upstairs to his loft, just like Elisha has a place that we'll get to. And he lays upon him, just like Elisha. And he prays to God to bring the life back into the boy, just like Elisha. And the Lord brings breath into the boy. Brings breath. Glory be to God. He brings him back to life, just like Elisha. Then Elijah gives it to the mother, and the mother takes it away. But what... The two similar things about these two things are this woman and the woman that we're going to talk about in Elisha, they both recognize that Elijah and Elisha were men of God. Were men of God, similar. So when Elisha, we start, it starts out by saying, this was a great woman of hospitality. That means she, when it says great woman, she was a woman of wealth and uh, prestige. She was a woman, my God, that was not selfish. We know that by what she does. She was a woman, glory be to God, that would open up her house to Elijah because she spoke to her husband. She spoke to her husband and said, listen, because this man of God continues to come thither to us on many occasions, let us make him a a place where he can stay. You see, the woman initiated this. And our men, you may not like this, but it's okay. Sometimes you have to allow your woman to initiate stuff. Sometimes you're going to have to allow, because your woman does have a mind. You didn't marry a mannequin. I hope not. All right, you didn't marry a mannequin. You didn't marry a foolish a woman with no thoughts of their own. And a woman does, glory be to God, have ideas. But the problem with that is some of these hard head men don't want to accept it. It's either my way or no way. You're not going to say highway because you want her around. Okay. But anyway. But every now and then, the woman does initiate stuff that she sees, that is needed, that the man don't see. Because the man be so preoccupied working that those things that she sees doesn't even appear to him. He doesn't, he doesn't care about it. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. So the woman had to initiate it. I'm going to get myself in trouble over here today, Jesus. Again. Again. Glory be to God. So she tells the husband, I perceive. She says, I perceive. That's the wording. That this is a man of God. Discernment. You see, some of the women that you're married to do have gifts. 
And a man, if he's not careful, will stifle the gift of his wife by not paying her no attention. My God. <laughs> Let me talk to these people that's going to be doing this later on because this is right here. She said, I perceive that this is a man of God. And I think that we need to give him a place to stay. That when he comes, the word says, thither, means uh, my way, our way, he will have a place where he can rest. So she made a place in the loft, gave him a bed, a chair, a table, and a candlestick where he could read and study. And he came thither, and that's where he stayed. Not only him, but his servant, Gehazi. And she was a grateful woman. And so Elijah says, because you have cared for me so much, not only for me, but for my servant, what can I do for you? Do you want me to go speak to the king or to the captains on your behalf? And you can tell she was a wealthy woman. She says, no, because I dwell among my own people. I don't need anything. Whatever I need, I can provide for myself. I am well established. Glory be to God. But I, again, her reply was, I dwell among my own people. Now, the servant, Gehazi, says, but she has no child. And her son, is, her husband, is old. Now, I want you to remember what this I just told you. Her husband is old. And so, Elisha tells her to come back into the room again. And he begins to prophesy to her. And he says, about this time, this season, next year, you're going to bear a child. You're going to bear a child. But her answer to him was this. Her response was, oh, thank you. No. Her response was, did I ask you for a child? <laughs> Do not deceive me. Did I ask you for a child? In other words, she's saying, my husband is old. When we were younger, I wanted a child. Now I can't have a child, so I didn't ask for a child. Don't lie to me. That's what the word says. In other words, do not deceive me by saying something that can never be. She has dismissed it out of her. Even though she wanted a child, she no longer said it because her husband was old. old, couldn't have no child, but it was still in her. Why? Because of all her money and all her prestige, a woman during that time without a child was looked down upon. She was like less than a woman. There are things in this life that money cannot give you. And this was one of them. Did I ask you? Did I ask you for it? When I was asking, I didn't get it. But did I ask you for it now? Don't lie to me. These were her words. And about the time of the next year, glory be to God, the time she, was, she gave birth. Normally we always talk about the blessing or the testing before you get your blessing. Someone will prophesy to you and say you're going to have something or whatever, and before you get it, a test comes, see if you can receive it or not. We know that by Abraham, amen? Abraham was 75 years old. It was told to him that he's going to have a son out of his own loins. He's 75, his wife's 65. He doesn't have the child until he's almost 100, and she was 90, Amen? But during that time, glory be to God, the Lord makes promises to him. 
says, I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your, your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed by you. So God is giving him all of this blessings. But look at all the tests, 25 years he had to go through before the blessings came. So we understand that part of it, amen? And sometimes you got to wait. Even though the person is prophesying on you, what you're going to have, and it, my God, it comes into your spirit because you already know about it. Because when a person prophesies to you about something, you already have some kind of inclination about it. All they are doing, glory be to God, is confirming what you already know. What God has already told you. I understand there are prophet liars. The church is full of them. Oh, I got a word for you today. Take the word for your silly self. Hmm. So we always see this. But we don't see or we don't think about the testing after the blessing. Don't think about that. It says, when the child was grown. Now, this child was not grown as we know grown. And I'll show you that in a minute. Because number one, he went out to the field with his father. If he was a grown man child, he'd be working with his father, number one. Number two, the servant takes the boy back home to the mother, and it says the mother sits the, the, the child on her knees. Ain't no mother in her right mind going to have no grown man sitting on her knees. I don't hope, I hope not anyway. Doesn't the text say this? It says they took the boy and she took him and sat him on her knees. So that gives you a clear indication that he wasn't grown as we associate grown with. That means he was of a little age. Amen? He was still a child though. <laughs> And it says he was out there with the reapers again, the father. And this also lets you know about something about the father. Apparently, he was more concerned about making money than he was about his family. Uh -oh. He was more concerned about merchandising than he was about the family. Because when he came to him and said, Dad, my head, my head, take him to his mother. Now, okay, Jesus, we always, as men, sometimes don't confront things like that. We always say, take him to the mama. Take him to the mama. But it does say in Scripture, this woman was a generous woman. So therefore, it lets me know that she had the money. She had the prestige. Amen? So we see glory to God that she sat the boy on her knees. Oh, God. And I want you to know something. She says, after the boy died, she did this. She took the boy up and sat him in the bed of the man of God. There is a reason why Scripture tells us that. Hebrews 4, chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 says this. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. She took the child up and put him in the man of God's bed. Because that is equivalent, as we see in the New Testament, she took the problem and put it on the altar. Mm, Jesus, mm. she put it on the place where she had confidence something was going to happen. She put it in some place that she had confidence in. That she knew if she put it on the child's bed, nothing was going to happen. 
And some of you have put your problems in every place and any other place instead of putting it on the altar where something is going to happen. She had enough confidence. Enough confidence. Because, see, there's got to be somebody in the marriage that's, that's spiritual. <laughs> somebody got to know what to do when trouble comes. Oh, I don't need to offend no husbands up in here or later on, but get mad with God. <clears throat> she put him on the altar. Didn't say she prayed. Didn't say she did anything. She just put him on the place in which she had confidence. Because you are the one that spoke it into being. This is your problem. You handle it. And that's what God tells us to do. Instead of giving our problems to anybody and everybody who can't help us at all, like putting it on the child's bed, why don't you put your, your, your problems on the altar? to the one that can really change your problems. I dare say, glory be to God, you could have the best lawyer in the world, but if they don't know God, and you don't know God, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Somebody gonna have to know God. Somebody gonna have to know where do I go in times of trouble? Somebody has to know, glory be to God, because trouble does come. We're not exempt from trouble, but somebody has to know, glory be to God, that I can't tell my problems to my mama, my daddy, or anybody else. They can't help me. i got to put my problems on the altar. The place where I have confidence. And then it says this. Then she went and ran after him. Once you put your problems on the altar, then you really got to start running after Jesus. You leave your problem on the altar. She didn't take her dead child off of the bed and put it on a donkey and take it to Mount Carmel. She left the problem on the altar and went to God. Because the testing comes after the blessing. The child was the blessing. Now this is the test. What are you going to do with the thing I blessed you with? Are you still going to praise me and bless me after I gave you that job? Are you still, glory be to God, going to bless me and trust me when I made a way out of no way for you? So I'm going to put you in a test. I'm going to see what you're going to do when I touch your blessing. When I make that brand new car, all of a sudden, glory be to God, don't work right. Are you still going to trust me or are you going to blame God? When I touch your blessing, when I say that I healed you, then all of a sudden, I'm starting to feel the very pain in the same spot that you said you healed me. Are you going to trust God that you are healed? And what you are feeling is only a test. Oh, my God. Faith without works is dead. And then, glory be to God. I'm going to show you how she changes up. She says she calls her husband. And said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. Is she talking faith here? Hmm? A child is dead. A child is dead. The problem is there. But she's saying, I'm going to run to the man of God, then I'm coming back. But isn't it amazing that the husband still had no clue what was going on? He was oblivious. He was out there with the reapers, out there doing his own thing, with the remote in his hand, watching football. Oblivious. 
child sick and you want to know what the score is. I thank God I'm among people that love me because I'm. <laughs> and the husband said, Why are you going to see this man today? Why? It's not no new moon. It's not no Sabbath. So he had a specific time when you go to Jesus. You only got a special time when he go to Jesus. Work was preeminent. It ain't a festival. It ain't the Sabbath. So why are you going to see the man of God for? And all she said was this. It shall be well. You see, you can't explain to a fool spiritual things. All you can say is, it shall be well. She left her son on the bed of the man of God, and now she's speaking into the future. It shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. And then she begins to run, and the man of God sees her. Mm. He sees her. And Elisha tells him, I see her coming. Go see what's wrong. Go find out what's going on with her, dear Elijah. Go meet her. And when he goes, he says, this is what I want you to ask her. Are you well? Is your husband well? Is the child well? Now look at the difference in her conversation. Before she told her husband, it shall be well. She's saying now, it is well. Why is she saying it is well? Because in her vision, she sees the man of God on Mount Carmel, where her confidence is. And see, once you put your thing on your problems on the altar, and God gives you, glory be to God, confirmation that it's going to be well, you need to speak, it's going to be well. You can't take it back off the altar again. And it says when she got to the prophet, she fell down at his feet. And when she fell down at his feet, Gehazi tried, glory be to God, to take her away. And that kind of reminds me of Mary and Martha in the New Testament. Because Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Martha was so messed up with cooking food. She was wondering why Mary wasn't helping her. Jesus, tell her to come help me. But there's something about being at the feet of Jesus Christ. There's something that you should never allow people to tear you away when you're trying to seek your God. You should never, ever, glory be to God, let no naysayer, husband, wife, and child, anybody get in your way when you are seeking the true and living God. When you are at his feet, there's a reason why you go to the feet of Jesus. It allows you to hear from God first. It shows you that he, you recognize who he is. And it shows that you have a sense of trust. And the prophet says, leave her alone. There's something wrong, and the Lord has hid it from me. Has hid it from me. Because if he would have known, he would have went back to the Shudamite's house. She would not have came to him. He would have went to her. So the Lord had hid it. And then he says this, Gezi, take my staff and put it on his head. Well, if you know anything about Gehazi and his character, my God, when the Syrian Nahum, my God, was cleaned of lepers, leprosy, and he wanted to give money to the prophet, the prophet said no. But the, Naaman left. The servant Gehazi went behind him and lied. And says, there's a young man that he needs some money because he wanted money. So his spirit was bad. And that's the reason why a lot of God's children cannot function in the kingdom. Because their spirit is bad. Yeah. 
How do I know it was bad? Because glory, when the Syrians came, it wasn't Gehazi that saw. It was the other servant. It was passed down to somebody else. Am I still talking about birthing babies? Okay. So the prophet had to go there. And he does this. He puts his face on the face of the child. He puts his hands in the hands of the child. He covers the child, mouth to mouth vegetation. And it says that the child got warm. And then it says this. Something that was strange as you read. It says that he walked out. He left. Then he came back and was walking to and fro. Because hmm. every now and then when you put something on the altar, even though God is moving on your behalf, you're going to have to go back another time and get before God some more. Because it says that he walked to and fro. And after seven times, glory be to God, the child began to breathe and was well. This was the second resurrection of somebody dead in the Old Testament. The third one was when Elisha had died. And there was a man who died, and they threw him in the open tomb. And as soon as the man touched Elijah's bones, the man came back to life. There should be some life when somebody touches you. Somebody who's in trouble, when they touch you, they should feel something. They shouldn't just say and just go walk away. There should be something about when I touch you, I feel the difference. There should be something about when an unbeliever touches a believer, there should be a difference. Because they are touching the property of the true and living God. But now let's talk about the birth of a child. Elisha said, about this time next year, you're going to have a child. What is this? November 29th? Write it down on your calendar. About this time next year, next year, you're not going to have masses on your face. There's going to be new members sitting in these seats. There's going to be signs and wonders active in this church. It's birthed already. It has been birthed already. The only thing that is stopping it from happening now is this coronavirus and the masks that are on the face. But once these masks come off, there's going to be a new voice. There's going to be a new look. There's going to be a new you. And I dare say, I dare say, in the name of Jesus, don't put your confidence in man or what man is telling you. Do not listen to the naysayer on the street because they are not in your situation. If you don't get your act together, you will find the wrath of God. Don't put on those suit up in here trying to encourage, I mean, Encourage somebody or fool somebody. Now I got a suit on. That suit don't mean nothing. It's your heart. I hear God quite clearly. This is the testing after your blessing. I gave you favor and you trampled on it. You better sit me down. Glory be to God. Mm. Mm. You better sit me down. 
Oh, Jesus. Because I feel the Holy Spirit. He has been, he's been troubled. When your life affects other people's life to the point where their blood pressure rises above normal, when they can't eat or sleep, when their character is messed up because of what you're going through and you are so defiled, you are so jacked up and deceived that you don't even see it. Does your mother have to die? We can birth a dead child or a living child. You can't say that you make Jesus your Lord and treat him like he's your friend on the street. No. Uh -uh. No, it don't work like that. If he's going to be my Lord, He's going to be my Lord. That means I'm going to do what he told me to do. I'm going to change what I have to change. Because I, my desire is to please him. Because he has already showed himself mighty on your behalf. I'm not calling any names here, but the person knows who I'm talking to. Who the Lord is speaking to. And I'm not speaking because I don't know what I'm saying. I'm speaking because of what I know I'm saying. My mother's health deteriorated because of my foolishness. And it wasn't until long after she, deceased, she transitioned that the enemy started bombarding me with it. It wasn't until Jesus spoke to me and gave me peace about it. The blessing is a test after a blessing. Do not trample on the good things that God has for you. I just was praying to God and I said, Lord, please, I don't want to I don't want to go off. But sometimes things have to be said in such a way where understanding comes. I am not called to pity pat. I am not called to compromise. I am called to tell you what thus saith the Lord. That's what I am called to do. And the Lord says, be careful. you will find there is really a dark side. And that dark side, you don't want to be an inhabitant of it. Many of us adults in here right now thought we knew everything when we was kids, teenagers, in our 20s. Couldn't tell us nothing. Couldn't tell us nothing. Not nothing. Mom, dad, old, they don't know what they're talking about. What are they bringing me to the preacher for? What he know? This is my life. 
This is my life. I do what I want to do. This is my life. But it's not your life. You didn't birth yourself. I know some of the parents right now wish you could have went down in the drought. But they love you so much. They love you so much that they would bend over backwards to see that things are, are right. I remember, I'm going to close in a minute, but the Holy Spirit is dealing with me. I remember my mom used to have to come to visit me. <laughs> and all that she had to go through, had to take everything off, all the jewelry, everything, just to come visit me. And it hurt to see that, but because she loved me so much, she sacrificed it. But she already had one son that was shot six times by the police. She already had one son that spent more time in prison than he did home. And here come Eddie, the knucklehead, walking in the same steps. That's why I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. When you got siblings underneath you, you got to be careful what you do around them. Because you may not understand it, but you are their hero. And if you don't want them to walk the same path, you got to change your path. Because you cannot instruct someone how to do good if you don't know how to do good. That's all I'm going to say about this. I want to talk about the blessing, the testing after your blessing. <laughs>